series of tutorials, we're going to discuss an overview of energy modeling and then how to go about um, starting your own energy model using SketchUp, Legacy Open Studio, Energy Plus, and Excel. And I'm going to walk you through all the steps involved. The first thing you should know and understand is that what we're about to do is a bona fide real building information model. This is a set of geometry that is associated with certain characteristics. Uh, for instance, in this screenshot here, you can see that this window has in it associated a name, a surface type, a construction type, a um, boundary condition, etc., 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 along with all of the geometry that's associated with it. And that is a real building information model. There's information embedded in the geometry. So I'm going to show you a number of different ways of inputting this information. Before we start uh, on that, though, um, I think it, I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview of what you're going to do. First, we're going to look at a thermal zone and the, uh, that, the context for that thermal zone. And we're going to look at the geometric input that's required because it's significantly different than what um, you would traditionally think of as an architectural model. Then we're going to look at internal loads and schedules, then envelope characteristics, and finally we're going to look at HVAC systems and schedules and renewable energy. We're going to use Open Studio to do this, and uh, it's important that you understand the context in which you're using Open Studio. So Open Studio is a plugin to SketchUp. It's um, used specifically for building information modeling related to Energy Plus, which is a simulation engine. And what Open Studio does is it translates some of the geometry and building information into a format that Energy Plus reads. So the workflow is going to go something like this. We're going to start with SketchUp and input some geometry and then using the Open Studio plugin we're going to translate that into building information. The SketchUp file type is an SKP. The Open Studio file type is an IDF. And it's important that you remember the differences and I'll show you graphically how it's how you'll know that it's different. But basically what we're doing is converting SKP to IDF. And then in something called the IDF editor we're going to continue to edit that building information model. It's going to be a little bit easier within the IDF editor to do uh, some quick changes. And then from that IDF editor, we're going to simulate the, um, the, the thermal uh, run, and in fact the entire energy run, and the simulation engine that we're going to use is Energy Plus. Energy Plus is going to output a whole bunch of files. Among those files is going to be a CSV file, a comma-separated value file, which is going to give you all of the outputs for your simulation. And then we're going to import that CSV into Excel using another template that I've set up. And then we're going to save that as an XLSX file. So hopefully that workflow is clear. So first I want to start with the difference between a architectural model and a thermal model. You can see here I've got a architectural model of Worcester Hall and for this set of examples I'm going to just simulate um, the room that we've been in, the computer lab, which is over on this corner on the second floor. Now with an architectural model, depending on what you're trying to represent, you'll probably show materials, You'll probably show wall thicknesses, sometimes even glazing thickness. You'll show the shading devices. Um, sometimes you'll map materials on like this in order to see the, the, the concrete forms. Um, interior partitions, sometimes workstations and people, sometimes ducts. A thermal model is quite different. Um, rather than modeling all that three-dimensional geometry, a thermal model is... Um, basically trying to um, show exactly what the um, envelope or the boundary conditions are for a given amount or volume of air. 
Uh, it sounds like a weird concept, but this is going to be clear in a second. Think of it like a, a vessel that's holding all that air. And into that air, there are different um, thermal um, flux or, or differences, such as sun or internal heat. And so what you're essentially doing in the thermal model is heating up and cooling down that volume of air. Um, so there's a very different approach to modeling that than there would be uh, to modeling a three-dimensional architectural um, building. So I'm going to um, erase this. I'm going to just make a new, new file here. Uh, and so I've got a, a blank SketchUp file and it automatically comes in with this person. I'm going to delete him by pressing delete. And uh, now I've got a blank file. And there's a few things you should know about SketchUp, just how to model. It's a unique type of program. So over here on the left, you see a bunch of uh, different tools. And we're only going to use a few of them. We're going to use this rectangle tool. And we're going to use this push tool. and that might be most of what we use. And I'll show you a few other tricks a little bit later. So, for instance, if I want to model a, a rectangle, I can pick my rectangular tool, um, drag down here, uh, or place it here at the origin, click once on uh, left click, and then drag out and click again, left click. And now I've got a rectangle. Um, I'm going to erase that. Um, and do this again and show you I can do that and you see in the bottom right here it gives you dimensions so you can actually input those dimensions like 20 feet comma 40 feet comma enter and you'll get a uh, rectangle with those dimensions if I select this push pull then I can extrude that volume and I can extrude it to a set amount, I'm going to press Control Z, by uh, extruding it and then pressing, say, 10 feet or 20 feet or 15 feet. And you can uh, keep changing this as long as you haven't uh, changed to a different um, tool. So this is a nice feature. You can kind of do it, uh, do an action, and then um, make it a little bit more precise as you go. Uh, that push pull push pull tool also works um, in uh, sections, so I can push pull this way or this way. And in addition, I can, uh, if say I want to draw a line, I can draw a line vertically like so, and then push pull. Uh, a part of this in order to extrude it out again. And I can keep doing that kind of infinitely, which is both good and bad, I think, you'll see, um, to get different uh, surfaces. So all that is fine. That's pretty much most of what you need to know in order to um, get familiar with uh, SketchUp. Now, what, um, what you all are going to need to do is decide on an analysis zone. Oh, actually, before I go into that, I should explain. If I save this file now, file, save as, and I'm going to just save this to my desktop as um, uh, tutorial01. This is now an SKP file. It's, ignore that. It's a, a you can see up here, tutorial01.skp. Fine, SKP stands for SketchUp. So uh, that is its own geometry, and it's just SketchUp. It doesn't have any building information associated with it. Now, in order to associate building information or create a building information model using OpenStudio, I need to specifically use the legacy OpenStudio um, uh, extension. And to access that, I can go to here to extensions, and then there's a whole bunch of different uh, tools to use, and I'll explain those in a second. Um, the, you should also have some uh, toolbars here that, that automatically come up. If they're not up there, then go into Window Preferences and make sure that 
Legacy Open Studio is checked here. Um, and if someone has um, clicked them off like so, you can then you can go into View Toolbars and in the Toolbars you can find the Legacy Open Studio here. There's this one and this one and restore them. So now it's very important that you keep these separate from these. And in fact, I like to keep these um, Legacy Open Studio toolbars up on the horizontal up at the top and then the SketchUp tools on the left so I don't confuse them. And um, so these are separate. So I can, um, I can open a Energy Plus input file, IDF file, from there. And I'm going to open the... 00E plus template that's um, on the assignments website and you'll see that this is going to import um, a set of geometry. It also always comes up with this file does not contain default construction names. Do you want to set these before drawing new geometry? And I just say no. Um, in this case it's also telling me that it has not been versioned up to 8.5. It's at 8.4 and I'll see if I can change this before I distribute the template file, but if not, it's okay. Um, so now you see that I've got um, this geometry, and actually let me move this. I'm going to move this by uh, selecting it. So I'm going to um, drag it and move this by going to the move tool. I'm going to move this away from my SketchUp geometry. So now you can see that I've got the SketchUp geometry I made before, and then I've got some geometry that's associated with that template. And these are different. Um, this is the SKP file, and this is the IDF file. So this is a really difficult concept for a lot of people to understand. And it's really important that you not confuse the two. Um, this make, is made all the more confusing by if I were to save this file as a save as a SKP. I'm going to save this as tutorial2.skp and it will, it, SketchUp is not that smart. It doesn't know that this is its own building information model um, over here. And so I'm going to, just to make this clear, clear this and I'm going to open that tutorial2 file and you'll see that my Open Studio objects come back and it's very likely you're going to get all sorts of weird errors, which I'm seeing right here. Um, and so you never really want to save the IDF files as SKT. Um, always keep the two separate in your head. So I'm going to um, delete these, all the, the um, objects associated with that IDF. I'm going to re-import the IDF here. And that is going to bring those back as they were. Great. So, I've got here uh, this theoretical zone, um, which you can see right here. It's got a roof, walls, and a window. And it also has three PVs back here and one big shade which is a tree. So um, I'm going to explain all these different components but should know that these components are all going to come with that uh, template file.